In this video we're going to finish off the restaurant and bar app Tim Pan Alley and we're going to publish it to the Apple App Store. However, there's a few things I'd like to change first. I'm going to rearrange these buttons. I'm also going to change directions to being a direct link to Google Maps or directions. And I'm going to make the contact us a tap to call button. I'm also going to change the tabs to custom tabs because custom tabs include some nice extra features that I'd like to use. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so first we're going to edit the buttons on tab one. It's very easy. Just go to edit pages. And of course it's tab one, the first tab. So click on edit. Now highlight directions and click on the down arrow. Now we're going to move the contact us. So click on contact us and click on down arrow. And there it is. That's how I'd like it. And I'm going to change these links. Currently I've got directions linking to an intermediate page called address.html, which then links to a map as well as shows an address. However, for this example, I'm going to show how you can link directly from this button to the maps. So we have to edit the HTML to do this. So click on HTML at the top here. And let's detach the HTML. And we're going to edit the third button in the list. So GPS coupons here, QR scanners here, address.html. So we're going to highlight that link to address.html. And I'm going to paste in the latitude and longitude. The code I've pasted in is lat long colon slash slash and the digital latitude coordinates and the digital longitude coordinates. These are the same coordinates I use for the GPS check-in coupon. So we just pasted that in and all we have to do is click on save. Now when we use this button on our phone this will go directly to the map. We can also do something similar for contact us. So let's do that now. HTML, detach the page, and we'll scroll down to the last button, which is this group of code here, contact us. I'm going to paste in TEL colon and then the phone number and click on save. And now click on save for the page and now that's done. Now this button will work as a touch to call button. OK, now that's done, let's go back to the dashboard and change the tabs to custom tabs. So from the dashboard we go to navigation settings. And it's currently set to standard tabs. Let's make that custom tabs, save changes. Now with the custom tabs we can change background color if we like, or we can use a background image. And we can also have a selected background image. Well, I'm going to use a background image and a selected background image. And these images are actually borrowed from the radio app. So I'm going to upload the files. Now this is the background tab here. Choose background image and selected background image. I'm going to choose one here as well. Upload a file. Now I've called this BK tab blue light. I quite like the radio app with the red light. So again, if I just change the hue of that light, now it's a blue-green light. Choose that. So I need to do the same for all the other tabs. So I'm going to highlight that, Control-C to copy, and then background image. Control-V to paste, background image, Control-V to paste, background image, Control-V to paste. Right. Selected background image. Highlight that, Control-C to copy, Control-V paste, control V, paste, control V, paste. Okay, so those are done. Let's save that. Now I'm going to get really fancy and I'm going to invert the color on these icons. For example, the martini glass. We'll save that. I'm going to open up in GIMP and here's the martini glass and now I'm going to go to colors invert. I'm going to export that and I'm going to call it martini drink invert.png. So we'll export that. Now for selected icon I'm going to use the inverted color version of it. So we'll go to upload files and there's my inverted color version. So 
So that's uploaded. There it is there. Choose. Now when we select the martini, it lights up. We've got the little green light there and the martini glass actually lights up as well. And now I'm going to do it for all the icons. Okay, I've now edited all the icons and I've got inverted colors for them all. So the only thing left to do is to save that and then go back to the dashboard and there's one more thing I've decided to add and that is page transitions. So if we go to page settings and I'm going to put a transition between some of these pages. So the GPS coupon, I'm going to have it flip to a GPS coupon and the QR scanner, I'm going to have it flip to a QR scanner and all the tabs I'm going to have those as a slide. Now I'll save that. Save changes. And now we're pretty much ready to publish to iPhone. So the next step is to duplicate this to iPhone. To do that, down the bottom here we've got duplicate. And we're going to call this Tin Pan Alley iPhone. And it's going to be a native iPhone app and duplicate. Tin Pan Alley iPhone application has been created successfully. Refresh my applications to see it in the list. Okay, so we go back to My Applications and Tin Pan Alley iPhone is this one. So this is the version of Tin Pan Alley we're going to publish to iPhone. The next thing to do is to click on the Publish button and have the app marked as paid. We also need to update the App Store properties. As you can see, we need to select an icon, 1024 by 1024. Now I'm going to scale the old image icon that I had before. I'm going to scale it from 512 to 1024. And that's all we have to do, just export it. Apple actually requests that all icons have square corners. You just provide a full size image 1024 by 1024 and Apple will resize and round the corners as they feel necessary. So we'll upload that. Upload it. For category, I'm going to put business secondary category, entertainment. Now I'm going to call this Tin Pan Alley, Tainan. And I've got a new description for it. I'm just going to paste that in. I'm going to paste in some keywords I've created. Now I'm going to save that. Now let's go back to the dashboard and it's ready to publish. Click on ready to publish start submission process. Now instant build, you'll need your own Mac computer and the Apple software to submit that to the Apple App Store yourself. Build and review is the same, you'll also need your own Apple computer and the software to submit it to the App Store. Review and publishing, this is what we're going to choose, so I'm publishing from a Windows machine. This will publish under my own Apple developer account and the Buzz Apps App Builder software will handle the whole submission process for me. So this is the easiest way to publish and it's the only way to publish unless you have Apple hardware. So click on next. We've already filled in these details we've already got the new icon there. So click on next. We're going to enable push notifications. We still need to do one more step to complete the push notifications. We will enable it at this stage. Click on next. There are some more icons we need to upload. So let's do that now. Now for these icons, we're going to go back to the original 512 by 512. I've got a new script foo here, which will do a 57 by 57 and a 114 by 114. That's a 72 by 72 for good measure. Okay, we're going to put it into Buzz Apps Icon Test Tin Pin Alley Images. And that. Now we can upload those images. 
Apple doesn't require rounded corners. In fact, they require square corners. They'll round them themselves. Here's a 57 by 57. And 114 by 114. Click on Upload. We need a splash screen, 640 by 960 pixels. We're going to take this image and we're going to distort it. Scale the image. Unlock those. 640 960 scale now we're going to export that Tim Penali splash 640 960 export and I'm going to undo that I'm going to do it again for 640 by 1136 Forty one one three six scale. I'm going to export that six forty by one one three six. That's for the iPhone five. Okay, now we can upload those two. Browse six forty by nine sixty and browse. 640 by 1136 upload okay these are our splash screens for the various iPhones that's the image that will show when you first open the app okay next app version settings please specify a build version if this is a first time submission version should be 1.0 every subsequent update should have an increase in build version 1.0 1.1 1.2 etc please check the last build version in itunes and increase by 0.1 so build version 1.0 we're going to call it tin pan alley on the phone we take off the iphone part of that right enable sync Yes, we want to synchronize the app builder because we're going to be using the push notification page and various other things like the tabs going to update automatically. Enable the sync button allows manual synchronization of the app resources. Now we don't want the sync button. Enable info button shows app information such as author name. I don't think it's necessary on this app. Enable app auto rotation. No, there's nothing that needs auto rotation, so we'll leave that off. Background audio, we've got no audio. Enable shine effect. iOS will add standard gloss effect to your application icon. I think it looks awful. So we're going to take that out. Submit. Request process complete. So over the next two business days, it'll be tested for compliance with the App Store review guidelines, and then it'll be submitted to the App Store for review. It'll then take another week, generally about five working days, for Apple to review the app, and then if it's compliant and if they like it, it'll go into the App Store. Now, not every app is going to make it through the review process. If for some reason this app is rejected, we just have to make some changes and resubmit it again. Okay, thank you for watching and best of luck with your iOS app submissions.